Chicago the Musical was originally titled Chicago A Musical Vaudeville. The music's by John Kander, uh, the lyrics are by Fred Ebb, and the book was by Fred Ebb and Bob Fosse. Uh, it's based on uh, reporter Maureen Dallas Watkins' uh, play, I think it was a 1926 play. And basically the story is a satire on corruption in the administration of criminal justice and the concept of the celebrity criminal. Uh, so there's a comparison between justice, show business, and what was happening in contemporary society. There was a, a silent film produced by Cecil B. DeMille. Uh, it was 1927, called Chicago, and it starred former Max Senate uh, bathing beauty. Her name was Phyllis Harver. And then there was a 1942 uh, movie starring Ginger Rogers called Roxy Hart, and some of the elements of Chicago uh, a Musical Vaudeville were taken from that Roxy Hart movie. Maureen Dallas Watkins uh, worked for the Chicago Tribune, and she was assigned to cover the 1924 trials of accused murderers Beulah Annan and Belva Gertner. In the early 20s, Chicago press and the public became riveted with subjects of homicide committed by women. So there were several high-profile cases uh, which generally involved women killing their boyfriends or their husbands. And there was a string, there was a string of acquittals by Cook County juries uh, of female murderers. And the juries were, at the time, mostly male. And so the convicted murderers generally faced death by hanging. Because these ladies were generally attractive and women, uh, they felt they couldn't be convicted. And so most of them were acquitted of their crimes and they became celebrities. Uh, there was only one instance that uh, one of the murderers actually was hanged, and that's because she was foreign and she didn't speak English. And that's actually um, portrayed in the show by Hanyak, the character in the show Hanyak. In the 1960s, Gwen Verdon read uh, Maureen Dallas Watkins' play uh, titled Chicago, and she asked Bob Fosse to sort of create a musical around it. And of course, he went to Ms. Watkins to, um, to buy the rights to it, and she refused. And it wasn't until her death in 1969 that uh, Richard Fryer, Verdon, and Fosse bought the rights to the play. The original Broadway production of Chicago opened uh, on June 3rd in 1975 at the 46th Street Theater, and it ran for a total of 936 performances, closing on August 27th, 1977. The original cast starred Gwen Verdon as Roxy Hart, Cheetah Rivera as Velma Kelly, Jerry Orbach as Billy Flynn, and Barney Martin as Amos Hart. A lot of people will know Jerry Orbach from um, uh, Law and Order, and a lot of people might know Barney Martin from uh, The Golden Girls. He was the cheese man. Uh, certain songs related to specific performers like Eddie Cantor, Burt Williams, uh, and Roxy Hart was sort of modeled off of Helen Morgan, Velma Kelly, uh, Texas Gwynnon, Billy Flynn, Ted Lewis, and Matron Mama Morton was a Sophie Tucker type of character. Notable replacements in the original production of Chicago uh, were Anne Reinking replaced uh, Gwen Verdon in the role of Roxy Hart, and Lenore Nemitz, who was Gwen Verdon's original standby, replaced Cheetah Rivera. So she did the show with uh, Gwen Verdon for a little bit, and then she and Anne Reinking played opposite each other as Roxy and Velma. At one point during the run, uh, Gwen Verdon became ill, and so Liza Minnelli came in for a month or so to replace uh, Gwen Verdon in the original role. The original production of Chicago was nominated for 10 Tony Awards, and it didn't win any because it was up against uh, the very popular A Chorus Line at the time. Uh, the only award that Chicago won uh, back in 1976 was a Drama Desk Award for Best Lighting, and that was uh, Jules Fisher who did the lighting. Chicago was ahead of its time uh, due to Bob Fosse's genius and showing a light on uh, the judicial system at the time and society. Uh, audiences of the 1970s really weren't ready for such a cynical look at things. And, and the show was truly brilliant and really didn't come into its own until the 1990s during the revival. Some notable productions of uh, Chicago I'd like to mention. Um, I was first introduced to Chicago in 1989 at the Pittsburgh Playhouse, and the production was directed and choreographed by Danny Herman, 
and it starred Karen Prinzik as Roxy Hart, who was the original Anytime Annie in 42nd Street on Broadway. Um, Tony Award winner Kathleen Marshall played Velma Kelly. Uh, Tony Award winner Billy Porter played Mary Sunshine. And then there were other notable Pittsburgh performers like Joe Franz, Phyllis Stern, and Howard Elson in the show. And I remember coming off a tour of 42nd Street and going back to the Playhouse and seeing this incredible production, which was basically modeled af after the original 1975 production. There was a 1992 production at the Long Beach Civic Light Opera, and that was directed by Rob Marshall. It was choreographed by Anne Reinking and starred Juliette Prowse as Roxy, Bibi Neuwirth as Velma, Gary Sandy of WKRP fame as Billy Flynn, and Kay Ballard as Mama Morton. And that's sort of like what brought Chicago back into the public's consciousness in, in the 90s. So there was a revival at um, the City Center Encores in 1996, which later transferred to uh, Broadway. It played the Richard Rogers Theater, and the original production of Chicago in 1975 played the 46th Street Theater, which is actually the Richard Rogers Theater that was renamed. So their uh, City Center Encores produced this basic concert version. It was directed by Walter Bobby, choreographed by Anne Reinking. Anne Reinking also played Roxy. Uh, B.B. Neuwirth was Val McKelly. James Naughton was uh, Billy um, Flynn and Joel Gray played Amos. So it was this lineup of stars, and of course they all held their scripts in their hands. And I was fortunate, my partner and I were fortunate at the time to get two of the last tickets. So we sat in the last row of the very back balcony to see the opening night of Chicago at uh, City Center Encores. And the score hadn't been heard for like 19 years. So it was really thrilling, because it was the first time you really heard Chicago with a full orchestra on Broadway. And the audience was on its feet so many times that my partner and I literally stood on the armrests of the chair, leaning up against the back wall of the theater because it was just so electric. And that production from City Center Encores is what transferred to Broadway. The, the 1996 Broadway revival actually was a lot more popular than the original production. Probably uh, due in part mostly probably because of the O.J. Simpson trial in 1994. Because of all of the celebrities surrounding that trial, um, people were basically ready for this story in the 90s. They weren't ready for it in 1975, but in the 90s, thanks to the O.J. Simpson trial, everybody saw you know, uh, trials and celebrity uh, murderers in a different light. It, uh, the revival of Chicago is the longest running musical revival, and it's the second longest running Broadway musical after Phantom of the Opera. Let's see. The revival won six Tony Awards, which was more than any other Broadway revival at the time until South Pacific came along in 2008, and it won seven Tony Awards. Let's see. Other notable productions of Chicago. I was fortunate to get to be in a production of Chicago, which was directed by Larry Giroux, who was a replacement in the original 1970s production, and he directed and choreographed it. And uh, Peggy Taphorn played Velma Kelly. I was Mary Sunshine, and Allison Cahill was Roxy, Jeff Howe was Billy, uh, and Joe Franz played Amos. And that was a really, really fun time uh, getting to perform in the show. It's my first time uh, actually seeing it since the City Center revival, so it was a lot of fun doing that production. In 2010, Temple Theater produced Chicago, and it was directed and choreographed by Peggy Taphorn. Peggy also played Velma, and Corey Brunish played Billy Flynn, Leah Cole played Roxy, and Michael Brocky played Amos. There was a very successful 2002 film version of Chicago, which was directed by Robbie Marshall. And that starred Renee Zellweger, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Richard Gere, Queen Latifah, John C. Riley, and it won an Academy Award for Best Picture, which was the first time in a very long time that a musical won the Academy Award. 